All right. Um, I had a few questions uh, pop up about converting units per hour to milliliters per hour. Um, this typically occurs when the question is asking about a heparin infusion um, or an insulin infusion. And the confusion I think comes in also is um, trying to do uh, desired over have with these types of calculations uh, can prove to be difficult, if not um, impossible. So I just wanted to show you how I would approach this uh, utilizing dimensional analysis. Um, even if you dislike dimensional analysis, um, hopefully the way I show this to you will, um, will simplify it. So um, let's take a look at a few questions and I'll work them out for you. All right, so uh, sorry for the delay there. Um, so this uh, first question, the order calls for 0.45% normal saline, 1,000 milliliter IV with heparin, 25,000 units to infuse at 1,000 units per hour. And the flow rate is what in milliliters per hour? So that's what we're looking for. So a lot of times, um, at least what I've found with working with uh, students, particularly nursing students, is you just don't know where to put the values. Um, and I found that uh, it's helpful to circle imp important information and try and keep those values together because um, if you think about it, um, what this is sta stating here is that you have 1,000 milliliters, 0.45% normal saline. Now this 0.45% does not affect our calculation, uh, so you don't need to worry about factoring that in. Um, but what is important is this 1,000 milliliters, and then within that 1,000 milliliters, we have our 25,000 units. So they're together. They're in the same bag uh, is the way I envision that. So it's in an IV bag. It's sitting over here on a pole uh, connected into uh, the patient, and it contains, it's the 1,000 milliliter bag with 25,000 units of heparin. And if you keep those together, um, a lot of times you at least know where to start um, with, with different things. So um, in the past when I've worked with uh, students on this, um, they would just be putting the units and the milliliters just all over the place looking for something called a magic number and it got very confusing uh, for them. So uh, the way I would approach this is I would utilize dimensional analysis, but I start off by asking myself questions. What am I looking for? I'm looking for milliliters per hour. So that tells me where uh, that I need milliliters on top. Um, if I mean, that's just how I reason that. That's just a, a straightforward, simple way. And that tells me right off the bat that I'm going to start off with my 1,000 milliliters right here over, because they're in the same bag, my 25,000 units. Sorry. I'm not good with this mouse here, but I'm trying. There we go. Units. All right. Now, I don't want milliliters per unit. I want milliliters per hour, but I do have another rate here, this 1,000 units per hour that I can use that I can convert mil unit, milliliter per units to, unit, uh, to milliliter per hour. And I just do that by doing my dimensional analysis. I'm not memorizing any formula here. I'm just taking the units and I'm just trying to eliminate units. And the nice thing is I keep it exactly where it needs to be, 1,000 units. I mean, I'm going to keep it exactly as it's written per hour. And guess what? Before I do any calculations, I can cross out units and I'm left with milliliters per hour, and that's exactly what I want. Um, and then when I do my calculations, um, just pull up my calculator here. Um, I just do 1,000 times 1,000, and I divide that by the 25,000, and I'm left with my final answer of 40 milliliter per hour. Um, the problem comes in if you're doing desired over half, 
the other way that you can do this, and I, I'm just I'm always cautious about uh, saying this, but if you're going to do desired over have, a lot of times you're taking the same units, uh, like milligrams over milligrams, and you can kind of do that with this. You can take 1,000 units over 25,000 units times 1,000 milliliters. The only problem I have with that is a lot of times many people will put that 25,000 units on top the 1,000 units on bottom and multiply by 1,000. And now you get a completely different answer um, that doesn't apply here. So if, if I'm doing these types of problems and you're having trouble with it, I would just practice setting this up this way. So let's do the next one and I'll show you it's the exact same setup. Okay, so this question says 0.9% uh, sodium chloride, 500 milliliters IV with Humulin R, regular U100 insulin, 500 units to infuse at 10 units per hour. Lots of numbers here. Okay, so let's first eliminate the numbers that we don't really need. These just tell you uh, the different things and the inf or things that aren't necessarily important. But look, this is what's in the IV. The 500 milliliter IV contains 500 units of the U100 insulin. Okay, and then it's infusing at 10 units per hour. So I'm going to set this up the exact same way, starting off, remember, milliliters on top. So 500 milliliters over the 500 units because they're in the same bag. That's the main reason I do that. If you do that a different way, that's fine. As long as your math is working out and we're getting the same answers, you're doing it right. But that's the reason I write it that way is because this is in the same IV bag. I keep them together. Okay. Um, I'm going to multiply by the 10 units per hour. units cross out. I already know that I'm in the right unit milliliter per hour that I want and it's just a matter of solving it. Now I made this really really easy for you guys. You just cross out the 500 over 500 that equals 1 and so your answer is just 10 milliliters per hour so it actually ends up being the same thing. Now the nice thing about this question is if you had um, well actually no it's not the nice thing um, if you had switched these two around and you did 500 units over 10 units times 500 milliliters, then again, you would have had a completely different answer. Um, that's, a re again, the reason why I recommend or organizing your question much like this. If you're going to do desired over have, just keep in mind what, um, what units need to be on top. Your desire essentially is going to be your flow rate if you want to um, follow that methodology. Again, I don't recommend it, but if that's what you prefer to do, then by all means do that. Just make sure you we're getting the same answers. All right, here's another question that came in from a student. Um, I believe it's uh, supposed to be that it's the an IV containing 500 milliliters uh, with 10,000 units of heparin, and it's infusing at 50 milliliters per hour. How many units of heparin is the patient receiving each hour? So again, um, this is just a little bit different. Now notice they gave us the flow rate 50 milliliters per hour and they want to know how many um, units per hour they're receiving okay so I know that this is worded a little bit strangely um, but that's essentially what it's asking so this is actually really interesting so I'm gonna take and remember these two are in the same bag 500 milliliters 10,000 units and then this is my flow rate so this is important information nothing else in here uh, I need to keep in mind now since I'm looking for units per hour guess what in my bag I want to make sure, and in my calculation, I want to make sure that units are on top, okay? So the way I do that is I take that 10,000 units and you can see that my mouse writing is getting worse as we go along, I apologize for that, and then 500 milliliters. Now again, I chose I'm chose I'm I chose to start with this because I know that I'm looking for either units per hour or milliliters per hour. So that's why I keep starting with the IV bag. And I think that's a good place to start. If you start with here, that's fine, but the problem is notice um, if I told you to start with the flow rate, you'd be like, oh okay, I'll put milliliters per hour here. But then the problem comes in with the fact that um, now you're like, well, how do I get that milliliters into units and all that kind of stuff? That's why I suggest you start with the bag for these types of questions. Okay. Again, 
I'm just going to multiply by the flow rate that's given here, the 50 milliliters per hour. And we can double check to make sure we're doing this right by, if we cross out milliliters, I should just be left with units per hour. Notice that it says units of heparin patient receiving each hour. It's the same thing as saying units per hour. So we plug that into our calculation. And we got, again, I multiply across the top 10,000 times 50. And I divide that by 500. And I'm left with 1,000. units per hour. All right, let's look at another one. Similar question, but we're going back to what we looked at the first two questions in that we have, um, we have our infusion bag, 1,000 milliliter uh, of something that contains 25,000 units of most likely heparin. It's infusing at 1,500 units per hour. Notice that it's just written just slightly differently. And the flow rate is, mil we want to know what the flow rate is in milliliters per hour. So how do we write that out? Well, again, I'm looking for milliliters per hour. I'm going to start with my bag. Again, that's my strategy. I think it's just always a good idea. If you're going to choose something, just try and be consistent with it. 1,000 milliliters, 25,000 units. I'm going to multiply by the 1,500 units per hour. You per hour. Again, I know I've set this up properly because I've eliminated units and I'm left with what I'm looking for, milliliters per hour. Again, that's why I recommend that. Um, especially just starting out when you get really really good with these uh, calculations you can organize it however you like um, but sometimes just starting out if at least having a, a go-to strategy um, that's again one of the reasons why I always recommend the uh, dimensional analysis just because it's a good starting strategy and you don't have to memorize any complicated equations you just have to know uh, how to navigate um, given the data that's written here and sometimes that's the challenge is knowing what to put where Okay, but again, notice that I the the thing that tells me to put milliliters on top is what the answer is looking for. Okay, and then I just keep these two together because they're in the same bag, and then I just multiply by the flow rate. And at this point, the flow rate is 1,500 units per hour. And then I know I did it right because units cancel each other out. Per tells you that it's in the um, denominator; it's at the bottom. And then again, that kind of keeps it in mind. Um, a common other problem is that people want to do what's called cross multiplication. You only do that when you're doing ratio proportion and there'd be an equal sign between these two. There's no equal sign, so do not cross multiply. Multiply across the top, divide by the bottom. So for this one, I have 1,000 times 1,500 divided by 25,000, and I am left with 60 milliliters per hour. Now, if I was going to do desired over have with this, the way you would set this up would look something like this. And again, I don't like the way this looks. And my concern is that you'll put the units in the wrong place. But if I was going to do this desired over have, I would take the 1500 units per hour. And I would divide by 25,000 units and multiply by the 1,000 ml. Again, the big problem I have with this is like now it looks like we've separated our items out of the bag. And it's like I, if you've been to any of my review sessions, I always tell you that you know, if you mix lemonade or iced tea together, you can't just pull out the powder 
and pull out, and then separate the water and the powder into two separate things they they're mixed together and so that's just a concept that i have you uh, understand but the way this is set up is all correct your units cancel out and you're still left in milliliters per hour the problem comes in is that so many people will switch these numbers and if you find that you're doing that then i would highly recommend that you follow this strategy up here the dimensional analysis because then you won't make the mistake of putting the uh units uh in the wrong uh to get uh the wrong uh numerator denominator positions so anyway then you'd still get the same answer here but i hope that was helpful for you um again if you have questions just let me know um and if you have any further help um, you can always shoot me an email the rad tutor at gmail.com and I'll uh, add you to my uh, mailing list uh, you can subscribe to this YouTube video uh, or subscribe to my channel uh, also we have an active and live Facebook group that you uh, can join and ask your questions and get them answered there as well so uh, good luck uh, for those of you taking your tests this week and I hope that this was helpful for you thanks